Well, happy New Year's Eve, guys. Welcome back to the channel. This is the last video of 2020. Hope you guys enjoy it. And it is about Nokia stock. Why Nokia stock? Because it's a new position that I bought. And uh, they have a lot of good stuff coming up uh, around it for the 5G sector. So I want to show you guys my thoughts on this and, and see whether or not if it's a, a good buy or not. And then I reveal my position that I own uh, toward the end of the video. But yeah, guys, so Nokia. Let's go ahead and take a look at the price. And Nokia is trading around $3.89. Uh, $3 so Nokia Corporation is a Finnish multinational telecommunications information technology and consumer electronic company founded in 1865. 52-week high is 514. 52-week low is 234. PE ratio is 24.33. Market cap 21 billion. Relatively large. You know, a little bit larger company here, guys. We created the critical network and technologies to bring together the world's intelligence across business, cities, supply chains, and societies. With our commitment to innovation and technology leadership driven by the award-winning Nokia Bell Labs, we deliver networks at the limits of science across mobile infrastructure, cloud, and uh, enabling technologies. If you guys don't know much about Nokia, they actually had... Um, they had touchscreen technology like in the 90s, I think it was, but they just never was able to release it because of some stuff they had going on inside their company. And obviously, you know, it kind of fell off since then in that area, but they definitely hit the infrastructure up. That's where a lot of their uh, business is now. And they are multinational indeed. Uh, look at all these places where they, they do lots of business. Asian, Pacific, and Japan, India, Latin America, Europe, greater China, Middle East and Africa, North America, and they are constantly, constantly looking for new places to expand, which is why I think this is a, for my portfolio, this is a relatively small position in my growth portfolio, but uh, nevertheless, it's still a position I'm looking forward to. So check this out. They are constantly growing. They're a constantly growing company. Nokia completes acquisition of Elanon Technologies. This is a 20, March 25th of this year. Elanon's technology expertise and unique design platform and services enable Nokia to expand its market footprint by addressing the critical and rapidly evolving optical co uh, connectivity requirements of 5G cloud and enterprise working. So they acquired this company to kind of help them push and help them grow for the 5G requirements because it is a competitive, competitive area and uh, they need help with that. But they are constantly, you know, looking for acquisitions and, and mergers to, to do in order to expand their company. Now, one good thing to note is that Nokia owns around 3,000 patents, yo. 3,000 5G patents, should I say. Um, check this out. A financial and operating highlight for 2020. As our solid Q3 results demonstrate, we are making good progress into many parts of our business. Profitability was up on a year-on-year -year basis. We had a fifth consecutive quarter of solid free cash flow. That is awesome. Nokia Enterprise maintained its double-digit growth, and we continue to strengthen the competitiveness and cost positions of our mobile radio products. Net sales for Q3. 5.3 billion dollars well this is obviously euros but we're just gonna say dollars for now 5.3 billion dollars net cash and current financial investments 1.9 billion and q4 of 2019 was 1.7 billion obviously up from there and obviously up from here from 6 billion to 7.69 billion for total cash and current uh current in financial investments looking at this here look look at the net sales reported for the region their biggest region is Europe, then North America. That is a big deal here, guys. And this is constant currency, year over year change. So 20% for the Asian Pacific, 5% for Europe, 17% for Greater China, 26% for Latin America, 27% for Middle East and Africa, and 2% uh, for North America. So as you can see, the bigger ones are, aren't growing as much, but the smaller ones sure are growing. Look at this here, Latin America. It's only 4%, but it grew 26% year over year, which is something that you want to see, right? Um, even though we're slowing down these bigger areas, they're definitely expanding in the smaller areas by segment. 
networks is obviously their biggest um biggest money producer and this would be network products and technical support or whatever nokia software 11 percent nokia technology six percent so, uh, the technologies would be like their um patents and renewal deals nokia software uh would be i'm assuming either their cloud service networks or their ip and fixed networks or maybe a combination of both now look at this here guys 5g commercial de deals by october 29th 101 deals live networks 36 okay enterprise net sales growth 19 percent constant currency year over year now it is uh, uh, the analysts say they have a 13 percent compounded year over year change for the next i think five years is what they are or uh, thinking to see but let's look at a little bit of this, the, the balance sheet they have here so total current assets we can see is dropping which isn't fantastic let's look at total assets also dropping a little bit but total current liabilities is dropping as well but a good thing to look at is see total current assets outweighs total current liabilities and same as total assets outweighing total liabilities so that leaves us with 15 percent i'm sorry 15 billion dollar uh equity here total equity right so if we look at the quarterly um i think it is saying around the same thing so the quarterly total current asset and total asset total current asset is growing somewhat at least from the um beginning of the year right but not much same here for total current liabilities and total uh total liabilities here but again we are still the assets are outweighing the liabilities and that is a great a great sign okay guys that's something you want to see if the liabilities outweigh the total assets that indicates a red flag for uh the company now check it out nokia lost a while back I think it was earlier this year they lost a deal to Samsung but they have been constantly grinding and getting more deals out of different countries okay so that is good Nokia wins Proximus Luxembourg 5G deal to digitize the country and this basically secures a nationwide 5G RAN deal supplies air scale 5G portfolio including single RAN um, and it strengthens partnership with uh, Proximus Group following recent 5G win in Belgium. Both companies will leverage their keen focus on innovation to accelerate the digitization of Luxembourg through the development of connectivity, resilient infrastructures, and 5G in demand by both consumers and business segments such as financial or manufacturing. The deal consolidates, wait, the deal consolidates Nokia's existing partnership with Proximus Luxembourg and the Proximus Group. So this is a good sign. They're constantly revamping their business deals. They're constantly trying to, you know, make deals better for them. This is another big, big hitter here, guys. Nokia starts production of the next generation 5G equipment in India. So Nokia, uh, whatever factory, is manufacturing the latest 5G massive MIMO equipment that is shipped to countries in the advanced stages of 5G deployment. Since 2008, the site has manufactured over 5 million telecom network uh, equipment units, supporting over 50% to more than 500, uh, 100 countries. So these guys are ahead of the curve on, in a lot of things when it comes to Nokia and 5G, right? They are uh, starting the production of the next generation, okay? That's the next generation of 5G equipment. You guys got to understand, even though 5G is relatively new, the uh, equipment becomes obsolete and they have to revamp the equipment once they, you know, realize this equipment doesn't work as well as the next piece. So another another big, big thing here, right? November 30th, 2020, Nokia and Togocom deploy first 5G network in West Africa. So they're constantly touching new countries with 5G. The, Nokia is a big player in 5G. Like I keep saying, Nokia supplies 5G equipment and services, introducing cutting edge connectivity to Togo. Nokia is a long term partner of Togocom 
and has previously supplied the equipment for their 3G and 4G networks. Togo.com is the Togolese market leader in telecommunications serving the entire country. Okay. Nokia announced Nokia announced that it has been selected by African mobile operator Togo.com in a three-year deal to deploy 5G across the country. Uh, in the capital city of Lome, the 5G network has just been launched. The first time 5G has been deployed in West Africa. The deal, which also sees legacy 2G, 3G, 4G networks enhanced, will strengthen Togo.com's market-leading position in Togo and future profit in infrastructure. I'm sorry, and future proof its infrastructure for the next generation to digitize to uh, of digital services for Togolese citizens. Wow, that was real, real very hard for me to read. I'm sorry about that, guys. So they're vamping up two, three, four, and five G in. Uh, West Africa, so well, that's amazing, right? They're bringing this 5G to places that uh, are a lot more rural, right? That's why I keep saying they're touching different countries um, that haven't been hit with it yet. So, Nokia to lead the EU's 6G project, Hexa X. So, they're already starting on the next generation, guys. And this is the first company to do so. Nokia is the project leader for Hex X, the European Commission 6G flagship initiative for research into the next generation of wireless networks. The Hexa X visions its <clears throat> the Hexa X vision is to connect human, physical, and digital worlds with a fabric of 6G technology enablers. Hexa X is the first official research initiative across the industry ecosystem to accelerate the foster 6G research and drive European leadership into the 6G era, which is, this is amazing, guys. 6G would be the next big boom for the telecom industry, right, guys? Uh, just like 5G kind of was the boom after 4G. I mean, it'll just keep going and going like that. Let's look at some of this Q3 performance. Q3 is showing signs of progress. Now, from Q4 19 to Q1 2020, there was a big drop. So it's negative uh, 7% reported, negative 3% constant currency. But as you can see here, from Q1 to Q2 to Q3, there is some growth. Now, why did this drop here? Uh, could be due to you know the the virus and all that. But I'm not I'm not 100% sure why it did that. Why? It dropped like this I can only assume that is why another awesome thing to look at here is this is the fifth consecutive quarter for free solid cash flow now total cash and current investments Q3 2020 7.6 billion compared to Q2 it's a 0.1 billion uh, dollar change compared to Q4 2019 it's a 1.6 billion dollar change right net cash and current financial investments one point nine billion compared to uh q2 it's a point three billion dollar change compared to q4 uh, 2019 it's a point one billion dollar change so the mobile access uh global service update year over year sales growth uh year over year sales down significantly okay margins impacted by project loss provisions and underlying significant operational improvements so the year on year slows down significantly i'm not too worried about that because they have a lot more um a lot of other positive things that come with it. 5G con conversion rate, excluding China, in the low 90 percentile range. And this is what we've seen up there earlier, guys, how I showed y'all the big drop. But we do have a little growth here through here, okay, uh, as far as for, you know, 2020. Nokia Enterprise double-digit sales growth. Demand remains robust. 83 new customers, primarily uh, private wireless. So look at this growth through uh, 2020. Again, we're going to see this big drop from Q4 to Q1, um, 19 to 20 throughout all of this. So this is net sales, 15% up reportedly and 19% up constant currency. Nokia software. Again, look at that same drop. Project delays and slower than expected CAPEX decisions. Orders remain strong though. Largest ever sector contract win, which is amazing. And they're ranked number one by analyst Mason. IP routing. Again, this is like the 33% uh, of. All right. So once again, guys, I just want to let you know. So 
mobile networks with 47 percent of their the money that they have coming in ip and fixed networks is 33 percent cloud network services is 14 percent and nokia technologies is seven percent of how much money they have coming in so this is the ip routing networks as you can see look at that growth to uh, minus two percent record uh, minus three percent reported with a two percent constant currency one of the best third quarters ever gaining shares uh, gaining share with the market leading fp4 technology strong pipeline of new products in 2021 that's what i like to see there or the slightly soft potential coronavirus impact yeah i'm not too worried about that with the coronavirus optical network strong net sales again up 19 to 24 percent uh profitability remains roughly break even okay look at that jump it goes down in q2 but then it jumps up over the q1 to q3 that's good project costs a reduction benefit in 2021 from elian acquisition that's what the uh, acquisition we read earlier guys fixed assets see the growth there and then nokia technologies lower brand licensing royalties get, given uh you know the virus renewed major patent license agreement demonstrations uh, demonstrates strength of patent portfolio including 5g that's pretty much it for the all the information i want to show you for nokia now there's still a bunch more information i could go over but i'm not going to do that because it's just too much for me right now to do so and i think i feel like i've given you guys enough information to either spark your interest in this company to look further into it or to be you know put off by it whatever it may be but i do want to show you guys my small position in my portfolio so this is in my m1 portfolio you guys know this is my growth portfolio so i only have 99 bucks in here which is 25 shares so 25 shares at an average price of three dollars and 91 cents so i put a roughly 100 bucks in here um i am down you know 77 cents which i'm not too worried about but this will be um three around three percent of this portfolio i think i might knock it down to a uh, two percent possibly depending on uh some more information that comes out but uh yeah this is three percent of my portfolio guys and look here another thing i wanted to show y'all nokia teams up with uh dtac for 5g services in thailand okay uh nokia selected by thailand's uh, dtac as its first 5g partner so they are definitely a leader in the 5g area and this is what uh this is what i was trying to show you guys which yeah i hope you guys enjoyed the video hope it was very informative and you learned something from it guys let me know in the comments below what you guys think about nokia and uh, if you think that uh this will be a a banger for 2021 and beyond like i said i'm gonna keep a small position in there nothing too big I'm probably not gonna try to get this over five percent of my portfolio but hey you never know if we start seeing some major growth from it we might up it a little bit but yeah guys look go ahead and smash that thumbs up button for the youtube algorithm go ahead and join the subscriber gang guys once again you know i know i'm not my face isn't part <laughs> of this video but uh i just didn't feel like being on camera today guys my next video definitely be on camera but yeah appreciate you guys so much thank you for watching if you want to continue your journey to financial enlightenment with me go ahead and click one of these videos hope you guys have a great new year Peace, love, and prosperity. I'm getting out of here.